represent Charity Good Hope Appeal. On behalf of everybody from the appeal, we thank you for your dua, for your prayers. Because without your prayers, we cannot continue to work and serve the orphans and the widows of Iraq and around the world. With your prayers, it helps us to give us strength and continue to work hard to raise money and to promote the destitute, the oppressed and the needy people. So please continue to pray and make the work for us. I've been working in charity work for several years um, from, from a young age. Um, my mother is my greatest inspiration. I grew up watching her help people around her, help homeless, help her elderly neighbours. And she always encouraged me to, to get involved with this kind of stuff. So from a young age, even when I was doing sponsor things at school, it was always for a charity like um, a charity that people hadn't heard of. Or if I was walking in the local town, I would see somebody that was homeless. You'd find me sitting down, speak, speaking to them or trying to help them in some sort of way. My main influence literally to do charity work is, is my mother. Coming into the faith, um, Islam teaches us to be altruistic, to help others. When we look at the life of the Ahlul Bayt, salam, we see that they would worship throughout the day and at night they would cover their faces and go out and help the homeless, help the people that are in need, the orphans, the widows. So the two, literally the two worlds have merged together. So even before I came into this religion, I would be out uh, working on several projects to, to help people in need, working on telephones, working in the behind the scenes to help establish different groups and, and raise money. And then coming into this religion, it was just like, it was like a jigsaw. Like literally the two parts, the two areas came together. And for me, that's what continues to push and drives me to change people's lives. My journey to Iraq was literally we go on these trips, we go on these packages where we, we have these luxury hotels and we go to like the tourist areas. So we go and see the, the shrines and we do our ziyarah and our visitation to the Imams. But I wanted to see the true Iraq. I wanted to see what really is happening as you just go a few miles away. And believe you me, dear viewers, literally everyone watching this right now, the, the disparity is unbelievable. The poverty is rife. You're talking when we were there, it was sometimes 45, 46, 47 degree heat. It was so hot out there. And people were living in housing that was substandard. You wouldn't even put your pets in this, this area. It's ridiculous. No roofs, corrugated roofs, lack of toilet facilities, sanitation was terrible, cooking facilities were awful. Now, as we went to visit the orphans and widows to see what we can do to help, there was such mixed emotions within it. There was such pain and suffering and things that were going on within myself. It was so difficult and so hard to see, like I said, young children that are running around literally with nothing. With women that are struggling because their husbands have become martyrs. So we can be safely walking around doing our ziara and doing our visitation and staying in these five-star hotels. Literally, they had nothing. smell is hitting me. It's 47 degrees of heat. But people drink from this river. They take the water from this river and they bathe in it as well. So they pump the water into their houses. Now look at this. Look at this. You want to know the effect on the environment? You want to know what plastic does to society? Look at this. Look at this. Hundreds, maybe thousands upon thousands of bottles. Plastic non-biodegradable products that are just dumped in this river. Can you imagine giving your child water from this river to drink? Can you imagine giving your mother, your grandmother, your parents water? We live in a society where over a billion people don't have access to clean water. Yeah? Over a billion people in this world don't have access to clean water. People have to walk miles just to get 
clean, sustenant water. And us in the West, what do we do? We shower in it. We flush our toilets with it. We waste water like it's nothing. We'll spend an extra 10, 15 minutes in the shower not even realizing that that water is cleaner than the water that these people are drinking right now. Now look at this. Come and look at this. Look. We want to be a charity that cleans rivers, that gives sustenance, gives life. Overarchingly, we want to give hope. Hope to the hopeless, to the ones in need. It's our duty to serve humanity. صارت مشاكل بينهم وبين عمامهم على مود يعني قطع أراضي وهاي فيعني اتعرضوا له بالطريق يعني صيدلية كان هو مندوب صيدلية فتعرضوا له هناك همين طلقوا النار عليه أي وبعدين يعني بقت مستمرة هاي المعاناة يعني محكمة وما أعرف شنو شكاوي بعدين اه قطعوا له الطريق وكتلوه هو وابن خاله قبل ما يصير الحادث يعني الطفل قعد الساعة بثلاثة بالليل ومن وقتها هو ظل يعني مكلب بابو شابق عليه بعدين من راد يطلع أخذ الحذاء مالته شاله من القاع ابني وخلاه وياه بالحجر وقام يفتر والله العظيم فهو كل هذا يعني يعني كان يحس راح يصير اكو شيء ويبعد عن نبو This is sister Athra she's left with two children widowed with two children You can see that the young one here has some medical needs and medical attention she can't afford to give her, him the medical need that he needs. Unfortunately, she's been widowed. There was a tribal conflict between two neighbors and they were arguing between land and inheritance. And unfortunately what happened as a result, the other side unfortunately came to the husband and in a rage and in total anger, they shot the husband in the head leaving two children behind and the widow with absolutely nothing. Not only that, the hospital, the doctors, they didn't want to get involved. They didn't want to help when this young man was dying, bleeding to death after the severe gunshot wound. They just turned their back, leaving this young man to die and perish, leaving this young widow to look after and raise two children by herself. We see around that she's living with her family. She doesn't have the basic necessities, the needs, the medical attention, the things that we take for granted in the West. Her hopes, her dreams, her aspirations is one day to have her own place, to have her own apartment or room that she can be self-sufficient and stand on her own two feet. Things that we take for granted each and every day. We see an example right now in front of us of this young sister that needs help and support and there are millions upon millions of widows and orphans out there in the world that you can make a change to and make a difference. When I see somebody that is, um, you know, begging or just downtrodden or just going through a hard time, it, it sincerely hits my heart. It, it literally is something that inside me that humbles me. I've been there, like I've been in really hard times. I've been in desperate situations myself. I faced times where, you know, I didn't know where I was going to sleep. I've lived in hostels. I've gone through difficulties within my life. And it almost brings that emotion from within. It almost brings that, like I know what these people are going through. Not knowing when your next meal is going to come from. Not knowing when you're going to put your head down next. It breaks my heart, honestly, to see that. And then when I see it from young children, young people, the youth, you know, they're walking around with no shoes on. Walk, they're cold, they're hungry, they're destitute. They've got mental health problems because they've seen atrocities and traumas. You just want to reach out to them. You just want to hug them. Being a parent, I almost put myself into that situation. What if my son or my child or my cousin, my nephews were in that same position? What would I do?
We've just come into this house and as you can see, we've got two orphans behind me, severely disabled in dire need of desperate medical attention. The father was killed in a car crash and the aunt behind is looking after them. Looking after all their needs, their medical needs, their care, their clothing. They can't eat by themselves, they can't wash by themselves, they can't even go to the bathroom by themselves, they're wearing nappies. This situation is dire, we walked into this house, the house is dilapidated. The woman is living on her own, living hand to mouth. She can't afford the medical attention, the doctors, the prescriptions that she requires to keep these children going. With your donations and with your help and your support, dear viewers, you can make a difference. You can make a difference to people's lives just like these people behind me. This poor woman is in desperate, desperate situation. These poor children are suffering. They're suffering inside. They need help, not just medically, but psychologically. Here beside me, you can see wheelchairs, a good range of wheelchairs here, used for the elderly, for the disabled, people that have accessibility issues. Imagine, you know, your, your elderly grandmother or somebody in your family that can't walk properly. We see them in the shrines. We see the orphans that are pushing the widows that are, are along. We see people that are in need as we're walking along that can't, can't move around as much. Us in the West, we take this kind of stuff for granted. We take it so much for granted. They don't have healthcare insurance. They don't have free access to NHS and stuff that, that we do. It's so important that we're able to provide things like this. It's so important. I need you to really consider what you're doing with yourselves right now. I really need you to think about what you can do to change people's lives right now because this kind of stuff here is life changing. This kind of stuff here means that the elderly, the people that are accessible, people that are disabled, people like this that don't have the legs to even move are able to have freedom. The freedoms that we have, the freedoms that we take for granted. So make a change today and give somebody that freedom. Give somebody that hope. Forty-seven degree heat out here. I mean, it's it's oppressive. Can you imagine having not having no fans? There's fans going around right now, and I'm still sweating. We can provide people with fans, sustainable fans. Look at this wall fans here. We've got stand fans. This is a must for countries out here in the Middle East with the humidity the way it is. There's no air circulation. There's no wind. It's very very oppressive. Very oppressive. This is the kind of stuff that's life-saving. This is the stuff where your money can make a massive difference. It can change people's lives. It can give a bit more comfort in their homes. So make a difference today and invest in people's lives. Make a difference, make that change. I'm standing here beside these cool water filtration systems that you can be put in homes. As you can see, it cools down the water. Not only that, they're really important. Really important, why? Because they have a filter system in there. It purifies and cleans the water, which means the dirty water that they are accessing from whichever source they're doing, there is some sort of purification process. Plus it's cooling down the water as well. In this heat, in this arid desert that they're living in, this is so, so important. It's vital, water is life. Water is everything to people. At the end of the day, if they can't get access to clean water, it's better that they cut some sort of water and use an item like this to filter it and to cool it down as well. Imagine the, the source of that within the body and how that makes a massive difference. Water is life, people. Let's make a change today. Let's change people's lives. Let's give people hope. Donate your money towards one of these amazing filtration systems. As you can see, we provide heating, electric carousel heating. In the coldness of the desert, in those winter nights, it's freezing. The temperature dropped below minus 10, 15, 20 degrees some nights. This is a necessity that we don't think about in the Middle East. We don't think that people need heating, but it's extremely cold at night and they don't have access to heating. They don't have this as a, as a, as a necessity. You know, they don't think about this. Something like this, a carousel heater, Look at that. I mean, what's that going to cost you? 
you know, maybe a family shop for a week. You could provide heater, sustenance, warmth to people. They can go to bed at night feeling comfortable. And all you've got to do is make a small sacrifice, a small difference, which will make a massive change to people's lives. Think about what you have and what others don't. Think about what you take for granted and what others would really need. Let's give hope to the hopeless. Let's make a change. Let's make a difference. Today, it's your turn to do that. What we have here is a really important item. Honestly, guys, this refrigeration, okay? Something, again, taken for massively granted in the, in the West. So we have a full refrigeration system here with an ice box, which means food handouts that they get, they can be kept in a sustainable way. So they can be kept for longer. The shelf life is longer. Stuff that we can keep our milk, our cheese, our bread, our meats in there. Again, we go for our weekly shops. We don't think about it. We just pile up our shopping baskets. We think we're just gonna keep it in there. They're gonna last by the best before date, keep them refrigerated. We see those signs. But these guys, they don't have that. They don't have that at all. So by providing something like this, a refrigeration unit with an ice box, will make a massive difference to them. It means that the handouts that they get or the food that they do get hold of will last a longer period of time, which means also the food will be more fit to eat and consume. Imagine you get meat and you have to keep it to one side and then maybe eat it three, four days later. What happens? Disease gets in, bacteria gets in. These young children, these widows that are already sick and already ill are eating this bacteria ridden food, which is making them even worse. Okay? You can make a difference by allowing them to have something like this, something that you guys take for granted each and every day. Yeah, When you've got your food in the fridge, let's do that for somebody else. Let's make a difference. Let's make a change right now. Donate today. Let's buy fridges for everybody that's in need of them. Behind me, as you can see, is a small pharmacy stocked with medication and supplies that are needed by the widows and the orphans. They cannot afford the medication that's made available in regular chemists or pharmacies here. Your support, dear viewers, is much, much required. If you donate towards health, this is where your money goes. This is exactly where it goes. So we need more of your help and more of your support. So the widows and orphans don't suffer with illnesses that cannot be remedied by simple solutions like this medicine. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I am Dr. Mohamed Hussein Al Musawi from Iraq, Karbala. I was here with the, this establishment since about five, five or six years. I came regularly, about one or once or twice monthly, to serve the orphans and widows here by examining them and giving them the treatment available here. Some of the treatment needed by the widows are for chronic diseases like hypertension, like diabetes, like uh, kidney transplant or CVA or cancer. So it is very difficult to find these medicines outside and it is also uh, expensive. That's why more donation we need from generous people or establishment for this simple pharmacy and for the widows and orphans. Okay, so the Hope Appeal is a charity that shares the ethos of like-minded people. What we want to do is give hope to the hopeless, the human beings in this world. There's so many people out there that are suffering and there is charities doing good work, but we have this ethos that we want to change that structure. We want to look at it from a different point of view. We don't want to give the man a fish for the one meal. We want to go further than that. We want to teach the person how to make the fishing rod so they can make fishing rods for the whole village and everybody can eat. The ethos is to have sustainability, to, work, to invest in sustainable projects. And these sustainable projects will be long lasting and will have a a longer effect in terms of helping to change societies around us. The Hope Appeal is brought together by like-minded people, like-minded individuals that have an ethos to help humanity. We're humanitarians, we're social activists, we're the ones that stand up for the ones that are voiceless. We want to be that voice and we want to change lives. And we can change lives through the help, through this amazing charity.
This is a charity that we partnered with in Najaf that look after and educate the orphans, the ones in the local area in need of that education. Teaching English, teaching religious studies, teaching the basics that we take for granted. We can see behind us some of the books that they're using, some of the, the English syllabus. And we can see there, there's the Arabic and the English explaining a volcano, etc. Education is the key. Education is the key to breaking the cycle of poverty. Once you educate people, the ripple effects that can happen after that is the key to success, is the key to breaking the cycle of desperation, the desperation of need. We're giving hope to those people around us. They have a few classrooms teaching uh, reception, year one, year two, year three, and so on and so forth. They've got many facilities here for the orphans to learn and express themselves. As you can see behind me, some of the pictures that they're drawing, it's really important for them to allow that expression to come out, some of their feelings, their deeper emotions, also their dreams and aspirations. Charities like this really, really are in need. Look at what they're doing. Look how they're supporting the orphans around the area. I want to show you a piece of art. When you look at this, this is, a, this is phenomenal. Now guys, talent is equally distributed, but the opportunities are not. They're not just teaching them just religion or a clerk. They're teaching them useful things. Maths and English will take them far in life. This will set foundations for them to actually grow and to get sustainable livings and incomes and sustainable jobs as they move forward in life. And of course, as they're learning these skills, this maths, the English, with their friends who may not be able to come and attend, they'll be teaching them as well. So the Sadaqa Jariya, the way that it will just keep rippling along is phenomenal. This is why a foundation like this is really, really important. Us at the Hope of Hill partner with such charities as this. Umbrella charities that need our support, they need our help. The people here that are teaching are doing it on a voluntary basis, dedicating their time, they're dedicating their energy towards what? To uplifting the people around them, helping the widows and the orphans, giving them sustenance in their life. Our view and our vision at the Hope Appeal is to help and support people like this and all we need is your money. We need your support. So that's why we're appealing to you today, to make a difference, to make that change. This is one of the many charities that we're partnering with here in Najaf. It's founded and run by Sayyid Ahmed Safi, who's one of the representatives for Sayyid Sistani. Sayyid Ahmed Safi is the scholar for the shrine of Abu Farl Abbas. To be the representative for Sayyid Sistani shows that it's a legitimate foundation, a charity that your money is going towards. The Hope Appeal are here to do their due diligence to ensure that your money, your funds, your donations are going towards a legitimate foundation and a legitimate cause and going directly on the ground to the people that need it. You can see here we've got a beautiful garden area that we set up with play area, slides, toy cars, etc. with a shade as well. So we allow the children to come out and have playtime. You know, allow the children to be children because they're not allowed to be like that when they're at home. They've got duties and responsibilities. So when they're here, we allow them to let off that steam. It's really important that they have that. To my right here, we have one of the rooms, which I want to show you. This room here is like a gathering, an assembly point. They have an assembly in the mornings. You can see the black cloth that's there. They do martyrdom to Imam Hussain alayhi salam in the mornings and set their day off in the right tone, as you would. At this age, their minds are sponges. They just absorb so much. And it's important to expose them to different medias, different channels. You know, digital format is incredible at this moment in time. It's an explosion. Guys, as you can see, we've only got four classrooms here. Very simple classrooms made out of like porter cabin material. But the more that you give, the more that you give towards education, the more classrooms we can provide, the more orphans that we can change their lives. Your support is so, is so important. As I say, education is the key to breaking that cycle of poverty. With your donations, you, you dear viewers, can make that change, make that difference. Let's expand this place. Let's make these more sustainable. Let's build more classrooms. Let's educate more orphans. Let's change more people's lives. It's really important, important to show them the different aspects of education. Stuff that we're so used to, we're so used to having exposure to in the West. So when you look at it and you, you see it, 
and you see the monitors, you see the computers, you see the books, the words, the language that they're learning, the maths, the English, it gives them that foundation to continuously grow, continuously grow and maybe achieve those hopes and dreams and inspirations. You never know. Somebody, a future leader, could be in this school right now. Somebody that has the potential to do that. And all it takes is that investment, that seed of investment to allow them to grow to their fullest potential. And you, dear viewers, can be a part of that by donating right now. As you can see, we've just come to a widow's house. I want to show you from the outside. I want to show you the house. Look at this. Look at the state of it from the outside. There's cracks in the walls. There's in desperate need of restoration. Look at the door, how unsecure it is. It's the heat as well coming from the house. Come on in, let me show you. This is the one where the, the, the court, there was a courtyard outside. And within this courtyard, this is the one when every time it rained, literally the place got flooded. Um, and they had no way of combating that. Like there were wires everywhere. So I can't even imagine what was going on with electricity. While we were here, I think on this particular, there's about 42 degrees heat in there. It was unbelievable. It was so hot. As we walk into this hallway here, you can see it's really dark, really, really damp as well. The walls. I just want you to focus just a little bit on this area here. Look at this. This is the fuse box, the electrics. Look at the damp that's coming in. When it rains, it seeps into the electric box and causes it to just cut out. People shouldn't live in this kind of situation. It's terrible. So this widow here, is living on her own with one son. She has, lives in one room and there's one kitchen. I'm going to show you around. Have a look at this. There's a small courtyard. Very minimal kind of living situation. There's not much, there's not much shelter here. So when, the, when it rains again, it's all seeping down. It comes in through the terraces into this courtyard area. There's no drainage. The toilet facilities are very minimal. Come here, let me show you the kitchen. This kitchen is very, very small. As you come through here, this widow is already struggling. Her son is at an age where she cannot continue to be claiming from the charity because he's a little bit too old now. So we need to be helping widows like this to make ends meet. She can barely afford the rent. Look at the situation of this kitchen already. Look at it, it's very, very basic. She has the bare, bare necessities to survive. We need to do something to make a change to people's lives, to help people, to give people hope, to get them out of these situations. Let me show you this room. There's a room that they live in. They live in one room here. She's really struggling to pay the rent. The, the rent's really minimal. I mean, for a few dollars a month, you could help to support widows like this. And there's hundreds and thousands of them that can't afford their rent. Come and have a look at this room. I want to show you this room. It's very small. This is what they live. It's a living area and sleeping area. Come on through, let me show you. So it's her mum, her son and her grandma that live in this one place. It's one room, guys, literally one room. You can see, I want, I want, again, I want you to show you up the roof. Look at the, the state of the ceiling. As it rains through, it comes and it drips down. And just here on your right hand side, again, I want you to have a look at the electrics. I want you to see these electrics. This is the thing that gets me. It's, it's the fact that these houses are not owned, they're rented. They're rented houses and in comparison to how much it costs to pay rent for these places, it's so minimal, it's so minimal for us to give like, you know, 15, 20 dollars or whatever it is for a month's rent. Well, a month's rent for this, this place, I mean, it's a dilapidated house. But you just think to yourself, what do we spend on? We've got it for a meal. You know, we've got it for a dinner and you'll spend 20 pounds, you'll spend 20 dollars just on the starter. No, we waste so much. See, that's the thing that gets me about these videos and going to see these widows and these orphans. We're just showing like pictures of one or two orphans or widows here, but there's thousands upon thousands that are out there just like this in the same states. Literally, we were driving along and we could see the houses we, as we see in them. In my head, I'm thinking there's another widow there, somebody else in need there, there's somebody else in need there, there's somebody else in need there. And it's endless. And this is only in one country. I mean, watching these, it just brings it all back. It brings back the emotion. You know, when we're in these states, 
you take on that emotion, it, it burdens the heart. As you can see, we just entered this house. This poor widow has three children, two sons and one daughter. The house is in desperate need of help. It's in dilapidated state. The eldest son has plastic bowels. The medical bills alone, she can't keep up with. The son really needs medication every single day and it's draining her resources. She's finding it really difficult to pay the rent. The rent for this place here with two rooms and one bathroom, kitchen is outside, is just, it's so small and it can make a real difference with your donations. I want to show you a few things, come with me. There's a bathroom here. The widows just explained to us that there's scorpions that come up through the pole, through the drain every night. Just last night she killed two scorpions. She's so scared to go to sleep in the house. She's scared for her children. We need to change this. We need to make a difference. Look at the state of this house. Just with a small donation will make a massive difference. Surely we live in a world where people don't deserve to live like this. The children are sad. They find it difficult to eat. The smell alone. Let me just describe to you the smell alone. It smells like stale meat. Inside the living room, there's, there's chickens running around. They have two rooms in the right here. We can see in this house, there's two rooms. One small room and one larger at the back. There's an air conditioning unit here, which is in need of servicing. It's 48 degrees at the moment, 49 degrees. You can see water dripping everywhere. Stagnant water, rust on the floors. These children of Gollet live in this kind of environment. You know, this, this place is like, it looks like it's gonna collapse. It looks like the walls in the courtyard are just barely holding together, just with minor bits of cement. You could just, I can even see the expression on my face because I can remember the smell of this property. It was like, it was almost smelt like meat, rotten meat. It was really bad and it was hot. The air conditioning unit was leaking. And I think there was three or four children that were in this property. The heat was unreal, 46, 47 degrees. It was unbearable, absolutely unbearable. And you don't want to turn your nose up because this is people's houses. This is their living situation. But we need to help people like this. I just need you to think right now. Think logically about what you're doing. Think about the water that you waste. Think about the money that you're consuming. Think about your own consumption because one day we'll be answerable for this. Watching these videos and watching this footage should hurt your heart, that your brothers, your sisters, your equals in humanity that are out there suffering. Allah is Allah, Allah is coming behind you, inshallah. I'm going to يعني أدي يصير بين خدر أكثر شيء هاي إذا بعد ما يقدر يشيلها اليمنى خذ شوية دكتور ساعة يقول له وهن العفو مفاصل معدك ساعة يقول له التهاب بالمفاصل خذ على فترة يقول له إنه براماتيز شوية شوية صعد عنده رجلي بعد ما يقدر يمشي أكل ما يأكل هاي النفس ضاق عليه يعني بعد لا يقدر يأكل ولا يقدر يبلع يأكل يطلع المي لو من خشمة بعد ما يقدر ياكل خلوا له صوند فتره بخشمه على مود نضخن واكله منعته ما فادته دزوا تحاليل الايران دزوا تحاليل السوري يعني على طرف جماعته والله هو بالنسبه له ما عنده بس هذا ابو الموكب كان زين قلت لك دخل كسر دخل الامام الحسين قال عالج بي لانه هو كان خادم الامام الحسين ما فاد بي اخر مره اخذوا تخربط بالليل يعني انتهى قام هيك يدنق يطلع دم من خشمه ياكل يطلع الاكل والماي كله من خشمه نار كله لو يرفع راسه هيك بس يدنق راسه شوي يطلع الدم من خشمه لليل اشتغل مثل هيك وقت تخربط كنا حاط نام عشر باي وتخربط انا ما اعرف لعب بالي نام طلع هو يعني ما اعرف يقولون يعني عالج خلال أربعة أيام مستشفى الحسيني ثنتين الظهر قالوا توفى من التوفى بعد 
عرفت هم جت مهلي لان كانوا هسه عيال اصلا ما سالنا عليه لا عليه ولا على بناته وما اقدر انا عدة رعايه صحيحه بس انا لا اقدر اقول له واحد الطيني هسه حتى اهلي يعني حتى صعبه علي ما اقدر تبكي مرات على لو ملاعيب لو شيء تقول هسه يطيب بابا وجي بنا تروح مرة تقول له خلي اروح العمام انا بكت نشوف هناك ابونا You know where we're gonna go? It's gonna be a surprise. Big surprise. Okay? Do you know where we're going? Hmm? Do you know? Should we go in? Let's go and have a look. Come on. Come on. What can we see? Look at all these. Ooh. Okay, have a look at what you want. This one? This one? This one? Yeah? Say hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. Is that nice? There we go. It's for you. You know, we live in a society where, a throwaway society where we have so much. Our children just get everything on demand. Anything that they want, I this, I that. What we did today, we bought these two little orphans, we took them to the toy shop, holding their hands. I can still feel their touch in my hands. <laughs> holding my hands so tightly, like they've never had that strength in their life. But their faces lit up when we went into the toy shop. I just said to them, take whatever you want. It's like, They've never heard those words before. We live in a world where our kids, our children, just take everything, waste everything. Don't even eat the food on their plate. Cupboards full of toys, clothes, name brand this. What's this world like? How can children have nothing and then we have everything? How can these kids... Why is there so much suffering in the world? We had the opportunity to meet the most amazing children, um, two young girls, and we were invited to come along to one of our charities that we're working with. They have like a, what we would call a food drive. Um, they give they give the basics, they give meat, they give sustenance, they give a small amount of money, a wage, a salary to the widows. Um, and that day we saw the, the young girls again and it was the most overwhelming kind of moment for me personally. And I know the guys there didn't see this, but when the, when the two little girls saw me, because we'd had a bit of fun and we were doing some coloring when we went to their house, they remember me, they come running up to me and held onto my leg. And it was this moment of like, Oh my gosh, it felt so emotional, like being so distant from my own family. And that moment there really, really stuck with me. So throughout that particular uh, moment, we were able to, um, it's, it's bringing back the emotions, I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's too much, it's so very overwhelming. It makes me so tearful, to be honest with you, I'll tell you the reason why, because the look in these girls' eyes, the look in their eyes when they looked up at me when they were holding their legs, it was almost like they looked at me as if I was their father. Like they missed their fathers. They missed that male role model in their lives. Their father sacrificed everything for them, for us. And that's something that I will take to my grave, that look in their eyes when they looked up at me. Now I was able to gather some funds together and the most amazing moment of the trip 
was taking these girls shopping. So we were able to get some money together and take them toy shopping. Things that we take for granted in the West with PS this and I that, and your kids have so much abundance. But just the most simplest act had the most amazing effect. For me, it was one of the most rewarding parts of that trip. Um, and it just gave them that hope and that dignity and made them for that moment, for that half an hour, 45 minutes or an hour, made them feel like children again. It just gave them that sense of, I'm a child and I've just gone to a toy shop and bought a toy, which is a normal thing for all of us, for all our children. But these people, they have nothing. So to give them something, it's just amazing. And we're giving them that hope. As you can see, we're standing in front of a widow's house. She has two orphan children, but the hope of Peel have helped her. We've put hope into her life. She now lives in this property, a property that we've helped to build, a property that we've helped to air condition. We've put electric supply in there, running water. And we've done this in a way so she could be more self-sustaining, can live freely. Her father, her father has provided this land for her so she can now live rent free. It's sustainable housing that gives people dignity, gives people that sense of pride. And most of all, it gives you hope, right? Look at the smile on this guy's face. He has his own bedroom. He has his own place to play. This is his yard. He's got his friends over there. You're happy, right? Give me five. Good man. With your help and your support, we can change people's lives. With your help and your support, we can give more hope to the hopeless, build more houses, provide more sustainable living and let people stand on their own two feet because that gives them dignity. You can just see a shell. You can just see like a, a pit bricks basically cemented and, and covered with plaster, very little windows there. To your eyes, this might look like nothing, but to these guys, it's like their castle. It's like everything. To them, to live rent free, to not have to think about paying that landlord or somebody for the land, it's everything, honestly. The happiness that it provides to these people is unbelievable. So don't judge what you can see on the outside. Look what you can see within, with inside these four walls and with inside the heart of these guys because with inside the heart of these guys is hope, is dignity and is pride. Please keep giving. Please keep digging deep and help the Hope Appeal. The future for the Hope Appeal is to grow exponentially, to work alongside partners around the world that they offer sustainable packages, they offer support to people in their local communities that is not only just going to give them one hit like a feed them or to give them a bit of sustenance or a bit of warmth is to look at projects that are lo more long term i.e building houses looking at infrastructures looking at building schools schools is a big one because education is the key to ending the cycle of poverty so our ethos now is to partner up and to work with and alongside charities that are out there doing great work and to build the Hope Appeal worldwide. The Hope Appeal is a worldwide charity open to everybody, open from every race, every creed, every religion, everyone. It's a humanitarian cause.